Hello, and welcome to Two and a Half Beards. Two things uh, before we start. One, this is Thursday today. Sorry about that. My internet broke um, somehow over the Tuesday. <laughs> on, on Tuesday, so I wasn't able to get this video up. I'm sure that the 16 of you or whoever, however many, that's probably actually kind of high, that watched this series were biting your nails in anticipation, wondering when I, when I would get the video back up. But the CenturyLink person came today and fixed it, so now I can put it up. Hooray. Number two, uh, you may, I'm very tired, you may notice that. I've been working out. Yes! That may, I think that will be the subject of a later video. Not for my own self-edification, but to talk about the things that I experience and how why that's important to me. But for now, we're going to finish up this conversation about procrastination. I ended up getting uh, Neil Fiore's book, who was you may recall was the author. This was the, the very book um, referenced in that blog post, Raptitude by David Kane. <clears throat> and uh, I haven't gotten all the way through it. In fact, I only just started it yesterday. I procrastinated a little bit on reading it. Uh, but very interesting stuff. I absolutely recommend it. Again, the title is Overcoming Procrastination, Practice the Now Habit and Guilt-Free Play by Fior Neil A. Uh, and one of his things, he, in the title there, it says guilt-free play. One of his big things is that a lot of our problems come because there's an imbalance between work and play in our lives. And this is certainly something that I can relate to. Um, I kind of had a transcendent realization at the, uh, very near the end of my undergraduate degree, which was last summer, <clears throat> that I wasn't living for anything other than work. And he talks about that in his book, The Puritan Ideal, there are two main Puritan ideals actually, um, that have colored this country uh, in, our, in the way that we approach work and life and play. One of them is that we should work all the time, basically, you know, Puritans chopping wood, kneeling on stones, praying, chopping more wood, that sort of thing. The other is that inside that there are, there's a duality in each of us between the spiritual and the physical, and that they are always, always, always at odds. And they're never together, <clears throat> and the spiritual and intellectual must continually subdue the baser instincts, and so you're always, you're always on guard against um, laziness, desiring pleasure, desiring you know, relaxation. You know, anything, anything that doesn't edify you um, morally or spiritually or uplift you in the eyes of God is, is wrong and you, know, you should not do it. And he really talks, uh, Fiora really talks about that. And I, I keep tapping the book here is why I look over here. Really, you can't see it, but... Uh, he talks about that in his book, um, this imbalance between play. And one of the things he says is that if we allow ourselves guilt-free play, it has a function uh, almost as if you could, you could call sort of waking sleep is what I like to call it. Because when you engage in guilt-free play, all of the things you have to do just vanish. And you can just be alive in the moment and do something that you enjoy for no reason other than you enjoy it. <clears throat> Something that I've long told people, um, friends of mine, is that anything you enjoy is worth doing simply because if you enjoy it, then by doing it, you become more yourself. Now, obviously, that obviously that has some limits, right? You know, if you enjoy looking at pornography all the time, Maybe that's something, a behavior you should, uh, 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 play, um, wow, geez, back up. <clears throat> if you enjoy that, maybe that's something that is a substitute for something else that you enjoy. Maybe that's maybe not such an adaptive hobby. Or penning violent, you know, imaginary violent narratives against people in your life who have wronged you or, you know, planning to hurt people or things like that. Maybe those are not so adaptive. But I feel pretty good in saying that anything else that you really enjoy that isn't harmful to other people is something you should pursue just because you enjoy it, because it will make you more you. <clears throat> and uh, he, anyway, one of the extrapolations that, that Fior has is that we continually put 
um, shoulds upon ourselves. We are thinking as such that we always think, I should do this, I should do that, I should not do this, I should not do what I want to do, instead I should do this thing that will edify me, I like that word today. <clears throat> and uh, that that's very destructive. That rather than, and his, his, his premise is that rather than accepting this Puritan ideal of the base against, the base physical against the intellectual and the spiritual, we should instead work towards a wholeness of being where we can say, yes, I want to increase my knowledge and I want to do as much as I can to uh, become, to produce things, to be creative, to become powerful, to become intelligent. And yet at the same time, I have things that I like to do that aren't necessarily productive uh, in a capitalistic sense, in an intellectual sense, and that those are worth doing because they enable me to continue doing those other things, if only because they enable me to do continue doing those other things. Um, obviously, there is the reasons the reason that I talked about before too, uh, and this is something that Aristotle said famously in his Nicomachean Ethics that we have to relax and basically mess around. We have to play in order to get back to our work because if work were one big long slog, we would never be able to do it. Uh, another metaphor that I like for this is that, um, again, going back to the sleep, the, the waking sleep, play as waking sleep thing. Imagine if we didn't have days, if it were just one long day until you died. We didn't have to sleep. We were just able to continue, uh, continue doing whatever we wanted to do at all hours. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, I wish we didn't have to sleep. I wish I could just work all the time. But that would be such a hell not to have any kind of break, to simply see your life as a point in between the beginning point when you were born and the end point when you're going to die. So in any case, we're out of time. But we need breaks. We need play. And when we engage in breaks and play, that is when we are starting that's when we start to see our best work because it's waking sleep and it clears out all the junk that we're thinking about all those worries anxieties everything else just as sleep neurologically calms down the brain trims all the information that's not so important and prepares you for another day of learning of uh, weaving a new neurological web can't remember who said that but it was somebody see you next week <laughs>